school teacher. Uh, our members were name tags now. Yes, and as you will see, you are Elder Emeritus. Yeah. And it's magnetic, so you just, if you're feeling strong, you pop off the back, and that's it. Okay, kiddo. <laughs>
the man. It is May 1st. We made it. We made it through 100 inches of snow. We made it through the holidays. We made it through the Easter season. And here we are in times of blossoms, um, the bulbs in the ground, the trees, all in, getting to be in full blossom. It is glorious to take a nice walk today in this great weather. Hopefully the rain holds off. The forecast seems to be changing as we speak. We only have one announcement this morning. Shirley White would like to come up and talk about um, our coffee hour. This one? Yeah, this one's fine. Good morning, and it's wonderful to see so many older faces that I haven't seen in church in a while. And I hope you come back frequently, because we miss you a lot. But that said, I'm going to be gone for the next three weeks. My husband and I are going to take a trip out west. And you know I've been doing coffee hour every week. So many people brought stuff in today. And thank you for that. It is wonderful to have your support for that. But if someone wants to volunteer to do coffee hour, I have most of the stuff back. Uh, well, Paul can show you where it is. Uh, or if you see me after church, I'd be happy to. There's a lot of stuff there, but we have Mother's Day next week, if one of you guys want to step up and do it. And then we have uh, two Sundays after that that we're looking for someone to just put stuff on the table. Most of it will already be in the refrigerator in the back. Paul will make the coffee and tea for you. It's nice and easy. So if you want to do this for me, I would really appreciate it. You can see me after church. Thank you very much. Friends, this is the day the Lord has created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you please stand and join me in our call to worship printed in the bulletin. Disciples, do you love Jesus? Yes. yes. You know that we love Jesus. Brothers and sisters, feed his lambs. Our first ten today is Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us now confess our sins to God. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, how many times have we betrayed, abandoned, and denied you? You welcome us, forgive us and love us. Let us not be driven away from you in shame, or hide from you fearing the full exposure. Welcome us once again. Forgive us and redeem us. Amen. Friends, hear the good news that you have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Find the peace that you have been forgiven. Let us now share the joy of that peace with one another. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Peace be with you. Hi, this is Steve. How are you? Oh, oh, dance sister. Oh, dance sister. Okay. American Jews have to be in This is. Hi, Joe. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm in New York. Just came in last night. Yeah. He's going to be around for a few days, and, and I'm going with him back to Beautiful. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. 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 Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the sun, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Let us pray. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenant with us. In the midst of the multitude of words in our daily lives, Lord, speak your eternal word to us, that we, that we may respond to your gracious promises with faithfulness, service, and love. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 8. Listen now for God's word for you today. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. 
Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Menorah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in that morning, sailed with his donkey, and took two of his young men with him. And he took his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. And on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw that place far away. Then Abraham said to the young man, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and we will worship. And then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt, off burnt offerings and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father. Abraham said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb. So the two of them walked together. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reason, reading I chose is from the book of James, a letter that James had wrote. James is one of my favorites. It's so today, so relevant for our work and our lives in the world which we live. And this is from chapter 14, chapter 2, I'm sorry, verses 14 through 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters? If you say you have faith, but do not have works, can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what good is that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I, by my works, will show you my faith. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see that faith was active along his works, and faith was brought to completion by his works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that said, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Friends, the word of the Lord. So the dictionary defines faith as a strong belief in God based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof of such God. As Christians, as Presbyterians, we are to believe that if we have faith in Jesus Christ, we will receive the reward of eternal life, that we will be saved. And that is true. Faith is the save all, be all. In fact, Jesus, during his ministry, healed many people. And he healed many people by their faith alone. The woman who grabbed his cloak, the leper, the man who was lowered from the ceiling. Jesus specifically told them, go, you are healed by your faith. If that is all we need to live forever, why does Jesus continuously call us to serve? 
Why is it not righteous enough just to believe? Why does James, the brother of Christ, tell us here today that faith without work is dead? Brothers and sisters, today we gather here today to celebrate, to celebrate the work of two of Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian's greatest workers. Because I think they knew exactly what James was talking about. They heard the call to serve Jesus, the call that he proclaimed time and time again. And what is so important to remember as Christians is that we are all the body of Christ, all connected together, working together for one goal, that one goal being the kingdom. The kingdom is you and I and every other human that walks the face of the earth, the trees, the flowers, the mountains, the water, the creation as a whole is the kingdom. We are called to care for the kingdom, grow the kingdom, love the kingdom, be the kingdom. Sometimes we have to sacrifice for the achievement of this goal. We are called to sacrifice our feelings in offering forgiveness to everyone. We sacrifice our love to those who may not return it. And we sacrifice our time to serve the Lord, to serve those in need. In today's reading, we are told of Abraham's willingness to sacrifice, to sacrifice his only son. It's a big ask. But God requested it, and Abraham followed. We are told of Rahab's sacrifice, the sacrifice of her safety. When God's messengers needed help, they needed an escape route. They needed to be safe. Friends, if we are to follow Jesus, should we not work as hard as they did? Should we not sacrifice the way they did? Now, I hope that God doesn't ask any one of us to sacrifice our children. This Bible story is very unique and profound, and the message is strong. But Jesus demonstrated many times exactly the what, the why, and the how to serve our kingdom. And since we all live in that kingdom, we must serve everybody, love everybody, care for everyone. For we are all one in Christ, children of God, related to each other in what we call creation. Brothers and sisters, no matter color, race, creed, sexual identity, gender identity, we are all siblings in God. We are all called to do the work, to be Jesus' hands and feet here today and every day. Every day we breathe as long as we are on this earth. We have all been given freely the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, so we may do what is righteous, the righteous things the kingdom requires. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 51, Jesus tells us, I love when Jesus does this. He always starts off, it, it, it makes me just tingle inside. He always starts off, very truly, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. Very truly. It couldn't be more honest of a statement. And what did he tell us today during our call to worship? He told us to feed my lambs, nourish them body and soul. And you know, I'm gonna go off script a little bit here, but the best, it just came to me, the spirit works, right? The spirit is always here. The best way to explain this, man, it just came to me. The best way to explain this is Matthew 25, you probably all know this, but Matthew 25 explains this perfectly. 
For I was hungry and you gave me food. So I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Hmm. Friends, we should be lifting each other up. Cheering each other on. not trying to outshine one another. Because truly, I tell you, the sky would be awfully dark with only one star. If we look at the world today, if we not watch the news, it seems all the work we are doing is finding new ways to hurt each other. Today, we come to recognize two examples of how to help each other how to build a faith community, how to exist in the kingdom. You see, I preach a lot about God's love. It has changed my life. It has moved me to ministry. And since God is love, we need to possess it, possess God. We need to share it, share God. We need to spread God around, and to do that, we must be in action. You see, love is meaningless without action. If we just wait around telling people we love them, but do not perform an action, an action of proof of that love, all we're doing is babbling. What if we went through life telling our spouse that we love them, and yet went on our life, went on our day, ignoring them. What meaningfulness would this achieve? To serve God is to love, and to love is to have faith. I've come up with a little equation here. Um, don't mean to blow my own horn, but I found it kind of, kind of fun. So, love plus service equals faith. Love plus service equals faith. I feel that is the equation to the kingdom. Bob Ildico, I'd like to thank you for your action, your work, your service. May the rest of us find it in our hearts to live up to your example. And may we rejoice in what God has done for us in response to your good work and make us fruitful in our good work. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, amen. Let us pray. Lord, long ago you called your church to a love beyond all social and cultural differences. And you gave them the gift of your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit to open their hearts and enact such love. Today, O oh Lord, give us that same spirit of openness that we may too discern new directions in our day for your dream to reconcile and heal all creation. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior, amen. Bob Eldeko, if you could come forward, take your place of honor. I know this must be difficult for you guys. Humility is part of our gift, and yet we're going to put you on a pedestal.
I would introduce him for this presentation and installation is uh, uh, Elder Emeritus at Lafayette Church, and I'm really humbled and honored to do that. I had a chance to get some information from Bob. I talked to him this week. This morning he just mentioned to me, he didn't, he didn't tell me how old he was until this morning, but he's going to be 91 next week. His wife Ann, who couldn't be here, is 99. All right. And they both live independently in a senior living uh, uh, um, facility in Orchard Park, uh, which we, Lori and I have been out to visit them. It's a great spot, but he's a testament to longevity and good life. But beyond that, I want to just mention a few things about his history and some of the service he's done here at Lafayette. Bob was baptized here at Lafayette in the 1930s. We can all figure that out. When it was then. He was confirmed at Lafayette in 1945. He attended Sunday school and he was also part of the youth group. It was called the, at the time, the uh, Young People's Group. He was president for two years. He participated in the Centennial Pageant in 1945 and in the 125th anniversary of Lafayette and the 150th anniversary of Lafayette. He missed the 175th because of COVID. But he told me he's looking forward to the 200th. <laughs> so am I, Bob, by the way. <laughs> uh, he joined the choir in 1947 until 1952 when he enlisted in the Air Force, served four years stateside. Thank you for your service, Bob. Uh, he rejoined the choir in 1991, and uh, that's a bit of his history, quite a history. Service-wise, he was the clerk of session for five years, and I can tell you, it's a thankless job. I didn't do it, but I've been on the session watching you know, people having to do it. He was on the Pastoral Lamination Committee in 2006. He's also served on personnel, worship, the Memorial Fund, in the Long Range Planning Committee. He's really given great service to this church over a lifetime. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, Lady couldn't be here today. And I know he has several grandchildren and great grandchildren. They didn't get that number. But uh, uh, the county fa family is, is progressing. And in closing, my remarks I, there are three words that really mark what uh, Bob County is. As, as an individual to me. First, he's a Christian, he's a gentleman, and he's a great example. Thank you, Bob, for all your service. Deacon Emeritus, rather, sorry. I can think of no one more deserving, nor anyone better, for current and future deacons to aspire to emulate than Ildigo. Ildi demonstrates the qualities, most important, the qualities of grace, humility, kindness, and enthusiasm in her service to others, both in this church and in the community. So I obviously can't tell you everything about Ildi, but let me tell you a little bit about Miss Ildigo. Ildigo immigrated to the United States from Hungary when she was about 10 years old. Her mother attended English classes at the International Institute. There, her mother met another student from Hungary, Mrs. Havas, um, who told her about Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church. So see, it can never hurt to spread the word about our church. Ildigo and her family then started attending. 
Ildigo was confirmed in this church in 1953. She has been a member ever since. Ildigo has had such a long career of service that it truly is impossible to include all of the little things. So I would like to highlight just some of the wonderful ways she has helped the church while serving as a deacon. You have to go back a little bit and remember that in earlier years, um, we had a congregation of over 1,200 people. At that time, we had both a junior and a senior choir and a full complement of Sunday school classes. I say this because in the 1970s, after her son was born, Ildigo started volunteering in our nursery. Um, she also then later became the refreshment person for the junior choir. We actually had one of those back then. Um, and then uh, during that time, she also um, managed to be the treasurer of our entire Sunday school. So that's pretty good, as well as having a husband and two kids at home. <clears throat> so while serving as a deacon, Ildigo was also very active in the Women's Association of Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church. Ildigo would go and visit all the shut-ins, or as many as she could. She would write and send get-well cards to anyone who needed one from our congregation. And if she noticed you weren't here, she would call you up to ask you, are you okay? Do you need anything? And maybe it was also a way of reminding you you needed to be here. Anyway, Ildigo also helped preparing um, lunches for our congregation and often prepared our coffee hours. We all love Ildi's tip, which she offered to bring today. And I said, no, we are honoring you. <laughs> Ildi and her beloved husband, Laszlo, also served on the worship committee for over 25 years, and together they prepared communion on a regular basis. This brings us to how I started a deep friendship with both Ildi and Laszlo. Laszlo and I were both serving as elders back when Reverend David Kunzelman was here, and I was new to the task of elder. Laszlo was not. We were working in the kitchen preparing coffee and communion together. Ildi was there as a deacon setting up the coffee hour. Oh, I knew immediately, immediately, that Ildigo was a saint. Laszlo would spill the coffee grounds. Ildi would very patiently, without ever saying a word, walk behind him and clean them all up. <laughs> um, Ildi needed it, or I'm sorry, Laszlo needed it. Ildi found it. it. They were the most loving, funny, and adorable couple together you've ever seen. Ildi and Laszlo, um, uh, uh, also helped in the um, Hungarian Community Center. They did a lot of things, but one of the things they did each year, um, and I went once to see Laz, is um, Laz would dress up as a traditional Hungarian Santa Claus in the traditional outfit. Um, and he may have looked like the traditional Hungarian Santa, but if it hadn't been for Ildi helping him get dressed, putting the pieces in all the right places, who knows what he would have looked like. <laughs> Laszlo and Ildi had a beautiful marriage of 54 years uh, before Laz went to be with the Lord. If Laz were here, I am sure that he would be very pleased to see his beloved Ildigo recognized for all her hard work. I have asked Ildigo why she never served as an elder, because I know she had been asked. And her response was a beautiful reminder of who Ildi is. Ildi said she always felt her place was to serve. And then she added a little tongue in cheek. Anyway, Laszlo was always the elder. <laughs> so it is with a great appreciation for her service that we present today Ildigo Olchberry with the plaque acknowledging her service as Deacon Emeritus. Do you want to come forward and say something? I just want to thank everybody for attending and giving me this honor, which I don't know if I deserve or not. Yes, you do. Anyway, thank you so much for everything. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you.
to say that I'm humbled with this honor is, is a, I'm beyond words, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I think you all know how much I, I love Lafayette um, and the people there. And uh, thank you, Mark, for the presentation. And uh, it's a day I won't forget. Thank you. next hymn was a special request. We will sing Onward Christian Soldier. Let us pray. Gracious God, we have questions. We cannot understand the madness of our world, the killing of innocents, the power grabs, the evil. Have we not learned? Have we not matured? As a people, can you not intervene to protect the innocent and shelter your people? We lament the nonsense, the madness, the tragedies 
of human making? Hear our cries, O Lord. Hear our cries for help and hope. Lord, deliver us from all that stunts our growth and is indifferent to our flourishing. May those who encircle us listen well and challenge us justly and believe in the potential you have planted in us. May our habits and heartaches that stop us short and dim our light not consume or distort us. May we be willing to stand exposed before you, hiding nothing so we can receive everything. Help us to live fully in today's moment, O oh Lord. Breathing deeply, cherishing life, and living attentive to good news. Living the grace of what is possible, the gifts of our friends and neighbors. Grant us a deep dose of gratitude for the abundance you provide and an observant eye to all we might be missing. May joy and laughter play in our lives, O Lord. May we be surprised daily by the beauty you set before us. May we attend to ourselves and each other with compassion, with empathy, and with care. Lord, satisfy us this morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. And as the body of Christ, hear us now as we pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The first words of the Bible are about God's own generosity. God gave us the gift of a beautiful, diverse creation. He gave us our loved ones. He gave us a good green earth and the animals which live here among us. On this, the Lord's Day, we come together to thank God, to offer our gifts so that the ministry of this church will continue to grow and be a blessing to the world. Let us now gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. There are three ways we can achieve this this morning. The first is place your in-person gift in the offering plate as the ushers come forward. You can always find us online at onwithjesus.org. Or you can mail your gift to 875 Elmwood Avenue. Zip code 14222. Let us now share with God what is God's.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you have blessed us abundantly with inner joy and an outer supply of all good things. We bring you now our gifts in response to the message of your word and in gratitude for your help in our poor attempts to do your will. May these offerings become streams of influence from this church to build and nurture your kingdom and to redeem our broken world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today, in honor of our honorees, How Great Art Thou. It's number 467.
Go into this world. Go inspired by the extravagant love of God we have felt today. Live generously with open hands, loving one another as if your life depends on it. Be good stewards of the gifts you have received so that God may be glorified in all you say and do. And may the abundant love of God surround you and may the extravagant grace of Jesus Christ sustain you. And may the constant presence of the Holy Spirit inspire and encourage you in every good deed and word. Amen.
You've been serving a decade. Who's going to serve a Come on. People said this woman has been here over and over again. So is it here? I mean, please. Are you still filming? Me? Are you still filming? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that, you know, yeah. oh, meritorious Christian service. You are meritorious. You have been designated uh, from the clerk of the service. Uh, he can be do Meritus is like, yeah. you're relieved. Yeah. You can just be on the Unless you want to, which they probably do. Except on the Session hereby designates Robert A. County Ruling Elder Emeritus, May 1st, 2022. Well done, good and faithful servant. There you go. We should have read it up there. Sorry.